into the wonderful liquid cordial. <laughs> I don't need that part anyway. <laughs> Natalie here of Artisan Cakes and today I thought I would show you how to create the equivalent of that ooey gooey Easter egg that's only available once a year. Well now you can have access to this any time of the year, any time you so desire. Um, so we are going to create the homemade version of these wonderful little cream based eggs. We're going to start by making our fondant centers. And that consists of one pound of dry fondant, six tablespoons of butter, two to three tablespoons of water or heavy whipping cream or any other form of liquid that you would like to use, invertase, and a little bit of vanilla. We're going to begin by placing all of our dry fondant into a mixer. A stand mixer works best for this with a paddle attachment. This is basically a combination of sugars and invert sugar, which prevents crystallization in our centers. And let's see, we're gonna go ahead and add our butters. And we're going to turn our mixer on low and let this start combining and then add all of our water. Go ahead and add your vanilla. We're going to add one teaspoon. And then go ahead and add your invertase. Invertase is an enzyme, also known as firmvertase, and it will break down this solid fondant into a creamy liquid center given enough time. It takes about two weeks. I know, that's, that's the hard part, waiting. Um, <laughs> I've only waited a couple of times. So let it rest at room temperature for up to two weeks to begin the enzymatic action. Let this combine really well. Turn it off and let's check this. I like to just take a little piece and give it a feel. If you feel anything granular in there, like little pieces of sugar, then it needs to continue mixing for a few more minutes. This is pretty good. This is nice and smooth. So now we're ready to scoop this out and we're going to color a small portion, bright orange, to become the yolks of our cream eggs. If your dry fondant, now wet fondant, candy centers, are a little too liquid to play with, if it feels like it is um, too soft, it may have built up additional friction in the, in the process of mixing in your mixer bowl. You can always put this in the refrigerator to firm it up a little bit and make it a little bit easier to work with. So I'm gonna take amounts about like that. That's probably Well, it's bigger than a golf ball, a bit smaller than a baseball. You can always do a little bit more. I want to make sure I have plenty of white for the pretty white portion of my cream egg. And then just set this out, add a little bit of food coloring, and blend it together. You can also add a little bit of powdered sugar to this mix if you feel like it's too liquid. Basically the powdered sugar is what's in the dry portion of that mix. So you can always add powdered sugar if it's so sticky that you can't work with it. This isn't too bad though. Once you have most of that color worked in, we're going to roll it into little tiny balls for our yolks. 
I'm going to take the gloves off for this portion just so I have better control. All right. One. And that's probably a little bit too big for this size egg. So I'm going to knock it down a little. And then once you fill this tray up with yolks, you will put this into the freezer and let them firm up completely while you're working on your shells. So now that we have our fondant made and our yolks are currently in the freezer firming up, we are ready to create the shells to put together our wonderful cream eggs. I'm just gonna unwrap one because I think those are so cute. These are super speckly and adorable and they, they reminded me of melamine plates. Like that's what they reminded me of, but we can totally do something a little different. You can go crazy with the colors of your chocolate. Um, you can do a true tie dye effect and stripe the chocolate shells, but we are going to make some very delicate little Robin's eggs. So I have melty chocolate, not too hot, that's important. We don't need it to be extremely hot, we want it to melt slowly. And I have a toothpick. And I'm going to just pick my, my molds up and using the toothpick, I am going to dot little spaces with chocolate. If you find that your chocolate is kind of stringing instead of putting little dots, um, just add a little bit of Paramount Crystal and that'll help thin down that chocolate. And we carry Paramount Crystals in bulk. Generally you wouldn't need more than an ounce to an entire pound of chocolate. So it really is just a few flakes for the chocolate that you're working with. And you'll want to stir this in really well and get all of that Paramount Crystal incorporated. And you can already see that chocolate loosening up. This is also the great save-all if for some reason you have overheated your chocolate and it starts to firm up more than you expect it to, so you can't use it in the molds like you would want, then the Paramount Crystals loosens it back up. All right, back to my little toothpick. Get most of that off and just dot the mold. Still stringing a little bit. And you can be as precise or as not precise as you would like. You guys know I have no patience, right? So for me, I just want a little dot. The less chocolate on your toothpick, the less stringing you're going to suffer from. And if you can dot and go straight up with your toothpick, if it does string, it'll go right back down into the dot area. You don't have to create the same technique for every egg. Like I've got the little brown speckles that I'm going to put in my robin's egg blue, but you do need to make sure that you have at least two halves that are the same color and style type. That way you have two pieces that work well together when we, when we match them up. And I'm setting my dark chocolate aside and I'm bringing out my pretty robin's egg blue. This is such a pretty color. It's actually just maybe, maybe a tiny bit too blue for me, so I'm going to add a little bit of chocolate brown to dull it down. You do have to be careful as you're adding chocolate brown, it turns a little bit on the green side. But that feels much more natural to me. And for this, you want to use a wide, flat paintbrush. And this brush will use the chocolate. The chocolate shouldn't be too hot. It needs to be warm. I think this is probably about 98 degrees. Warm, but not so hot that it melts our little dots. And you put a little blob in the bottom of your, of your mold and just brush it upwards toward the top edge. We need the mold to be thick enough that it will support the fondant. And we need to make sure it's not so thin that any of our fondant will 
leak through as it turns into the wonderful liquid cordial. <laughs> I don't need that part anyway. This is what happens when you properly sanitize all of your brushes and bleach water. You lose the glues. And to make sure that we are fully covered, flip this guy over and take a look on the back side and make sure you don't see any weak spots. Like I can tell that there's a slight weak spot right here. And now we're gonna do this for all of our chocolate molds. If you don't feel like using a toothpick to create little dots, you can pipe your dots inside too. You can also use a piping bag to put patterns and stripes and true tie-dye effects into your Easter egg. Cutting a very tiny hole. And piping very tiny dots. Let these cool just a moment before trying to add any additional colors on top of it. You can even pop it into the refrigerator for a minute if you need it to go faster. All right, pop these into the freezer for a few minutes and then we are ready to begin filling them with our fondant. Save some of your original colored chocolate. You wanna save some chocolate from the shell color. Um, this is what we're gonna use as our glue to glue the halves together. All right. Our shells are now fully cooled and firmed up as are our yolks. So now we are ready to start putting the white portion of our egg cream center into our individual little egg shells and our individual yolks as well. All right, so this process is really easy and I, I found that the easiest way to do this is with your fingers, but you're going to take a little bit of your white and just place it inside your shells. And we want to avoid overfilling. So there's always a chance you may have to take some of this out. I did notice that every time I broke into one of these brand name eggs, they had a little air pocket. So I'm going to guess that they had to work with small batches of fondant as well. We are going to cut each of our yolks in half and place one half per egg half. So we'll take this little guy, slice it in half. You can see that fondant becomes firm as it sits and press down into the mold. Make sure you're not outside the edges of the chocolate shell or above the chocolate shell, because then we won't get our two halves to actually stick together. You would continue this process with any of the eggs that you have molded. And make sure we're not outside the bounds of our shell, but I see a few little places that I want to put a little bit more yolk or a egg white into. So I'm just going to come back and fill that a little bit. That way I make sure I have plenty of fondant candy in each individual egg. Don't want anybody to be shortchanged. 
All right, these are all very ready to come out of this shell. How do I know when they're ready? Well, they pretty much release themselves from the chocolate mold. I don't have to do anything. In fact, sometimes it's a little scary because they'll pop out as I'm working. So just take and roll this mold over very gently. Press right in the middle if they don't want to let go right away. Two of these did easily. And there's my other two. There we go. And we're going to melt a little bit of chocolate and pipe it on two halves after I match these guys up. So I like these two together. I like these two. And I like these two together. And these two. So melting a little bit more chocolate, putting it in a piping bag, and piping around this edge to glue the two halves together to create our solid chocolate egg. I've worked really hard to put this beautiful shine on my eggs, and I would hate to melt it with my fingertips. So I'm going to go ahead and put a glove on for the hand that holds the halves. Flip this guy over and cut a eighth of an inch hole off the piping bag. And on one side only, it's not really necessary to do both sides. Pipe a little wall of chocolate right against the edge. Pick your other egg up, place it, and allow the two halves to glue together. Now, I like to use a paring knife and come back and trim off any excess. I also like to take a moment and make sure I have every single, every single little hole and crevice filled in. If not, our fondant as it turns to cream will seep out. I'm gonna set this down and let it firm up completely before I begin going for those little crevices. I don't want to transfer any of this chocolate over either, so I'm going to wipe that off. And egg number two. This guy has firmed up enough that I can find the crevices that need to be filled. So I'm just reaching in here with my chocolate and closing the gaps. Set him back down to dry the rest of the way and move on to the next one. And don't worry if you have a flood of chocolate that kind of comes out the edges that's where the paring knife comes in handy and will take off those excesses. Let those cool completely before you begin touching them anymore um, and before you use the paring knife to cut off any of those extra edges. Our eggs have been chilling in the freezer for a few minutes and it is time to do the finish details. To finish off my egg, I'm going to use a paring knife and just gently slice and shave away the excess chocolate on the surface. Don't dig too deep, but we can get this fairly flush with the original egg. There we go, cleaned up. And if you have any really rough spots, you can use a warm knife or sometimes just the temperature of your hands to smooth out those seams and make them disappear completely. But for my littles, my little ones will think this is the coolest, so I won't have to fuss too much with the outer edges. But I do want to put it in its pretty little pink wrapper. So to do that, I'm just using some little foil pieces. These are food grade candy foils in beautiful pink shades, perfect for Easter. Place the egg in your palm in the middle of that, and it's going to take two foil pieces for this. So I like to wrap the bottom first, and then for the cleanest appearance, 
wrap the top edge as your finish. Nice and tight. And then get yourself a cute little container. If you really want to dress these up, you could consider putting a bit of gold luster on them. And rather than basically lustering the whole egg, I'm going to attempt to splatter gold onto my egg. Like that. This is just a stiff brush. You can do as little or as much as you want. And this is gold luster dust that has been turned into a slight liquid form using a little bit of high alcohol content extract or um, you can even use vodka or Everclear to create little gold flecks on your Easter eggs. And there you have chocolate cream eggs, just like the brand that comes out only once a year on Easter, but you can create your own anytime that you like and enjoy these cream eggs at home or at parties or at special events. You catch the drift. All right, I wanna see what you do. Send me pictures. I wanna see your pretty Easter baskets this year. Thanks and have a great day. Mm -hmm.